All right. Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all and their glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Racha Kurash, the bondage to the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Citations to all the Ikean puts his word with true sincerity and with charity. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, whom the word in calls God and Jehovah Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is his son's name, with the word in calls Jesus and Racha Kurash is the Holy Spirit. As always, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the Israelites, according to the Holy Scriptures, as well as the speckled bird, the scattered Israelite foreigners, scattered amongst other nations whose outer appearance may seem to be of those nations to whom they've been scattered to, whose lineage through their father's line go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are Israelites, no matter what your outer appearance may seem to be. And as always, I'm the brother your diary from the Great Millstone Branch here in Chicago, and I'm back out to another lesson. It's going to be entitled The Poor Man's Wisdom. You see, in a, um, a, we, um, Hey, we live in a world in which a, a vanity is highly exalted, you see, but the wisdom, <laughs> which um, typically is with the lowly, you know, is looked down upon, you see. But the scriptures hey, tell you that a hey, wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her, you see. But um, Lord will, we're just going to go ahead and get into some precepts, man, and a hey, Lord willing, this is edifying. This is um, Ecclesiastes 10 and 5. There is an evil which I have seen from under the sun as an error which proceeded from the rulers. It says folly is set in great dignity and the rich set in low place. And what's the rich? This knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, which is going to be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation in this world and his vain, frivolous, decaying society. Hey, 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 the, 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 the um, true wisdom, the fear of the Lord, you know, the reverence of the Heavenly Father. You know, the reverence for the Heavenly Father, that's looked down upon, you see. But a foolish, foolishness, folly, wickedness, um, a all manner of evil is exalted and called light in this world, man. You see? And hey, that's something displeasing to the Heavenly Father. The Sirach 26 and 28. There be two things that grieve my heart and a third make me angry. A man of war that suffer of poverty and a men of understanding that are not set by. Who are the men of understanding? Hey, starting with our elders and our apostles, and those is teaching, you know, the, the, the um, right doctrine. Those are those men of understanding that are not set by, that uh, people scoff, hey, not um, taking heed to, not attended to, you see? But when all hell breaks loose, which soon is going to come, then the people are going to realize that they um, despise the counsel of the Lord, man. That these same men that they've discredited and scoffed and talked shit about, hey, these men, <laughs> um, they had the truth, man. And they had the things that's going to be, um, it's going to keep you stable, man. The wisdom, the understanding, you see. This is um, the last part of it. It says, in one that returning from righteousness to sin, the Lord prepared such as one for the sword. See, so the Lord that disagrees are, um, are displeased with those things. You know, a man of war that becomes a broke. Men of understanding, wise men that are not taking heed to. And one that drops the plow, turns from doing righteousness and, and does wickedness. All right. But this is um, Ecclesiastes 9 and 13. It says, this wisdom have I seen under the sun and it seemed great unto me. There was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. It says, now there was found in a city. It's like it was found in it a poor wise man. And he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. And they people um, look down on uh, well, in this world. You know, they look down. They look at the outward opinion, uh, appearance. They judge based off. You know, uh, the, the outer things when the scriptures tell us, hey, hey, a poor man, not for his, um, basically, um, how to say in Sirach. Sirach 11 and 2. Commend not a man for his beauty, nor abhor a man for his outward opinion, uh, appearance. You know, basically don't um, exalt a man just because he's rich and he has this gay apparel on and esteem him to be somebody. 
you know, the scripture say the trial of a man is in his um reasoning, what he says, what he what you know, his um words, his thoughts, right? It says, neither a poor man for his outward appearance, meaning a hey, look don't look down upon a man because hey, he may not have the best clothes, you know? Hey, it says the Lord look at the inner reins of a man. You see? <laughs> Cause how the Lord set it up, he given the what's considered the poor, the lowly. The less esteem, despised things of this world, and he gave them the true knowledge, the in-depth understanding and knowledge of his prophecies. Things despised. And the people that's in this world are um they um they um what what's the word? They contemn it. You know? This is um first Corinthians one and twenty. Five, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of the most high is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many wise men, not many, it's like not many mighty, not many noble are called. You see, the Lord didn't choose the people that's esteemed in this world, the doctors, the professors and, you know, these guys, these degrees. No, it says, but God have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world and things which are despised have the power chosen. Yea, and things that are not to bring to not things that are. You see, the Lord has always dealt with the lowly. You know, those less esteemed, those lowly base things, and he did it <laughs> to confound a, a, the, a, the wise, what's considered wise in this world, you know, so the excellent of power may be of him. You see, but to an unlearned man, a man that's only judging on the, on the outward appearance, you know, he's all oh, the guys got they got dresses on his 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 shoes don't look that right, his hair is a little nappy, but nonetheless, that man who you just scoff or ridiculed or contempt, hey, he's handling the word of life, you see, and that's the folly that's in this world, man. You see, verse twenty nine. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye and Hamashiach, Yahawashai, who of the Most High is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. See, so going back to his Ecclesiastes 9, it says, There was a little city, 9 and 14, there was a little city and few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. <laughs> Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. You see? <clears throat> and that's what it is, man. Hey, this, this world, they um set by the men of understanding. You know, that poor man and his wisdom... But but give attention to the uh, to the rich man, the man that's in power, you know, it says, verse 17, the words of a wise man are heard and quiet more than a cry of him that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroyeth much good. Right. And a wisdom, <laughs> a, it says the heavenly father love of none but them that dwell with wisdom, wisdom. A, to dwell with wisdom is immortality, man. You see? But hey, this world, they despise wisdom. And so forth. But hey, their um judgment, hey, hey, that Proverbs the first chapter, they said it count, they said it not the counsel of the Heavenly Father and would not take heed unto his warning. They're gonna be destroyed for, you know. Sirach so 13 and 22, it says, When a rich man is fallen, he have many helpers. He speak of things not to be spoken, and yet men justify them. And they just going back into that paradigm. The poor man that has, you know, not the material possessions, but he has wisdom. And then you have the rich man that doesn't have wisdom, but have the material possessions, and he's exalted in this world, right? It says, when a rich man is fallen, he have many helpers. He speak of things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. He does all his wickedness, but men still... <laughs> Uh, ride his boat, so to say, right? 
It says the poor man slipped and yet they rebuked him too. He spake wisely and could have no place. The poor man, he may have did something and everybody got on his ass, you know. He spake wisely and could have no place. He said some, dropped some wisdom and nobody regarded it because of who he was, right? It says, when a rich man speak of every man hold of his tongue and look what he saith, they exalted to the clouds and they are people. <laughs> you got our people that look like us Israelites, right? Here it is. You got the men of the Lord set up on the highways and byways, the shepherds, Jeremiah 3 and 15, who the Lord given for, for, for the leaders of his people, the great men of his people, our people. They won't listen to our words, but they go and listen to Elon Musk, the rich man, the, 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 the Edomite, the devil, because <laughs> he's rich, because he has power in this world, but he doesn't have wisdom. And the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord, man. You see, it says when a rich man speak of every man hold of his tongue and look what he say, if they exalt to the clouds, they shut up, they take good heed. Oh, we got to get into the cryptos and the generational wealth. But hey, the poor man and his wisdom, hey, nah, man, this world's going to be destroyed. Let's return to the Lord. Wait patiently on the salvation. The Lord's going to give us everything. Look, it's written right here in the scriptures. But if the poor man speak of, they say, what fellow is this? And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. <laughs> and that's the paradigm in this world, man. You see, wisdom to those that are <laughs> destitute of it, they look down upon it. However, they, that's to um, their own disadvantage because they knowledge and wisdom is going to be the stability of thy time and strength of salvation. This is Sirach 38 and 24. The wisdom of a learned man come of by opportunity of leisure, your free time, your reading time. Right. It says, and he that have little business shall become wise. You, you have to make time to sit down, study, pray, you know, do your spiritual homework, as I like to call it. Read. Very important, right? It says, and he that have little business shall become wise. You always do working and doing all this. You make a time for the Lord. You're not going to increase in learning, right? How can he get wisdom that hold of the plow and that glory of the gold? You're always working and always doing things of this world. How are you going to get wisdom if you ain't making the time, right? It says, and it's occupied in their labors. It's like it says that drive of oxen is occupied in their labors and whose talk is of bullocks. 26, he giveth his mind to make furrows and is diligent to give the kind father. So every carpenter and work workmaster, and this is going to different professions that, that men have, right? So every carpenter and workmaster that labor of night and day, and they that cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery to watch to finish a work. The smith also sitteth by the anvil and considering the iron work. The vapor of the fire waste of his flesh, and he fight of with the heat of the furnace. This is the noise of the hammer, and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh. He set up his mind to finish his work, and watcheth, watcheth to polish it perfectly. And hey, these guys in these different professions, they take good care and detail, you know, with it, you know. It says, so doth the potter sitting at his work and turneth the wheel about with his feet and is always carefully set at his work and make of all work by it's like and make of all his work by number. He fashioneth the clay with his arm and bowed down his strength before his feet. He applied himself to lead it over and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All these trust to their hands and everyone is wise in his work. And all these different guys, you know, they have their uh, trades, you know. And they are very good at it. You know, hey, we need these things, right? Without these cannot a city be inhabited. You need a smith. You need a carpenter. You need a doctor. You need um, a potter, right? Without these cannot a city be inhabited, and they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. Verse 33, they shall not be sought for in public council, nor sit high in a congregation. They shall not sit on the judge's seat nor understand the sentence of judgment. They cannot declare justice and judgment, and they shall not be found where parables are spoken. And when it gets down to it, yeah, a guy may be wise in, you know, certain trades, you know, lawyer or, um, you know, doctor or smith. But when it comes down to the things that matters, the knowledge, wisdom, understanding, the understanding of the times that you're living in, 
hey, hey, the prophecies of the heavenly father, right? It says they shall not be found where parables are spoken. You can't go to these guys when you need understanding of the times. What's going on? The scriptures tell you that a hey, hey, evil is coming. Troublesome days, a time like never before. And these guys, they're so careful in doing their work, you know, their their labors, which aren't spiritual. They're not going to be able to um, declare, you know, what's going on. They're not going to be able to go to the scriptures and point this and that out and say, OK, this is happening because the Lord ordained X, Y and Z. Right. Verse 34. But they will maintain the state of the world and their all their desires and the work of their craft. Right. They're going to be knowledgeable to the things of this world. But the spiritual things, they're not going to be able to discern them. You see, this world is preserved unto fire. You see, the, everything you hear in Babylon and Great America is going to get burnt up, right? So, hey, they, hey, as it says in Second Andrews, all they that labor, labor in vain. If you're not laying up those spiritual works, increasing the knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the Lord, hey, ultimately is vanity because this is what matters. Sirach 39 and 1, but he that give his mind to the law of the most high and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out all the wisdom of the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. Those as, as it says, Sirach, um, addicted to these things are exercised to these things, addicted to learning, whose meditation, a hey, Psalms 1 and 1, whose meditation is in the law. They're going to understand the prophecies. They're going to understand the wisdom. Two, it says he will keep the sayings of the renowned men and where subtle parables are. He will be there also. He's going to understand these things. The parables of the Lord, the dark sayings of the Lord, the prophecies of the Lord. How to be um, delivered from these dangers, right? This is the poor man's wisdom. He shall serve among great men and appear before princes. He will travel through strange countries for you have tried the good and the evil among men. He will give his mind. He will give his heart to like you. To resort early to the Lord that made him and he will pray before the most high and will open his mouth in prayer and make supplication for his sins. He's going to be praying to the Lord, you know, order his conversation. All right. Asking for more understanding in the Lord. He shall direct his counsel and knowledge and his secrets shall he meditate. He shall show forth that which he have learned and shall glory in the law of the covenant of the Lord. Many shall commend his understanding. And so as long as the world endureth, it shall not be blotted, blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away and his name shall live for generation to generation. Nations shall show forth his wisdom and a congregation shall declare his praise. And that's uh, ultimately a good memorial, you know, uh, a good memorial left here on the earth of a man of the Lord. It says, if he if he die, he shall leave a greater name than a thousand. If he live, he shall increase it, you know. But going back to the point, hey, 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 this wisdom is what matters, man. You see, when all hell breaks loose, which hey, is soon going to break loose, people ain't going to be going to ask LeBron James, what are we going to do? Because LeBron James is going to be in derision. But that poor man with that wisdom, he's going to know what to do. He's going to know what's happening, why it's happening, and what to expect. But the rest of you guys, they're going to be through, man. You see? This wisdom of Solomon 10 and verse 8, it says, For regarding not wisdom, they got not only this hurt, but that they knew not the things which were good, but also left behind to the world a memorial of their foolishness, going into the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So they regarded not wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord. It's the understanding, you know, knowing not to do certain stuff. And they, they disobeyed, <laughs> wasn't doing what was pleasing, and got destroyed, right? It says, but also left behind to them, to the world, a memorial of their foolishness. Still speak about that destruction to this day. So then the things wherein they offended, they cannot so much as be hid. And they, we, we know what they were doing and the judgment that happened, right? It says, verse 9, but wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her. You see, and here in this time, attending unto the poor man's wisdom, the wisdom of the heavenly father, 
which you have given unto our elders and our apostles, starting with their elders that was before them. By attending unto that, you're going to be delivered from the sad perils to come. You see? So wait, that's the poor man's wisdom. Lord willing, this ed lesson was edifying and uplifting. Call it like Mlach. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, Rakha Kurash. The bond of the elders and the apostles of the great millstone. Citations to all that I can push his word. With true charity, with charity. Shalom, Baragatham, Wa Kwam Yashurala. Shalom.